To begin our discussion of printers and printing, let's first take a look at printer languages. The language or method that Windows uses to send a page to the printer depends on the type of printer and the driver it uses. Some printers support more than one language. Common languages are PostScript language by Adobe Systems. This produces the bitmap image, or bits arranged in rows and columns. A single line of a bitmap image is a raster line. PostScript is popular with desktop publishing, typesetters, and Mac OS. PCL, or Printer Control Language. This language was developed by HP, but is considered the main standard in printers today. Many manufacturers use PCL for their printers. Windows GDI. The graphic device interface is a component of Windows, and this type of printing is used by lower-end inkjet and laser printers. XML Paper Specification, or XPS, is a newer language used by Windows Vista and 7 as a replacement for Windows GDI. Another option is for text containing no graphics or embedded control characters. This is called raw data printing. Modern printers can be categorized into the following types. Impact, inkjet, dye sublimation, thermal, laser, and solid ink. Dot matrix printers are still in use for any material that requires impact printing or line printing. In a dot matrix printer, the 9 or 25 pins that make up the printer head make actual physical contact with the ink saturated or carbon film ribbon, which in turn makes contact with the paper. These are the only printers currently suitable for printing onto multi-part forms and generating a carbon or NCR image. On these printers, the ribbons need replacing and the print heads may wear out. Overheating can damage dot matrix print heads as these units get quite hot during operation. These printers should be kept in cool, well-ventilated areas and not used non-stop for extended periods of time. Inkjet or ink dispersion printers are popular because of their small size and because they can print color inexpensively. Ink printers work by ejecting ink through tiny tubes, either with heat or by a mechanical method. Most inkjets use heat, created by tiny resistors or electroconductive plates at the end of each ink tube, which moves the ink. This is the bubble jet technology pioneered by Canon. The mechanical method physically forces ink through the print head. These printers may come with one or more cartridges of ink, usually black, and then a cartridge containing colors, or the color inks may be in individual cartridges. The more cartridges a printer contains, the higher the cost of replacing all of those cartridges. Pay attention to the print resolution, or the density of ink, which is measured in dots per inch. If you want good quality, the higher the numbers, the better. Print speed is measured in pages per minute and will be different for black and white than for color. Inkjet printers can print on a variety of media, matte or glossy photo pages, iron-on transfers, optical discs, or fabric, as well as a variety of regular paper. Dust and dirt can get into the print head, causing streaks or lines on your paper. See the user guide for your printer on how to clean this area, as it will vary from brand to brand. Missing lines and dots on the page can be caused by a dry nozzle on the cartridge. Older printers may need to have the nozzles cleaned manually, and newer ones can clean automatically using software or buttons on the printer. 
Again, this varies with brand and model of printer, so check the documentation. Ink streaks can be corrected by cleaning the print cartridge assembly. There are enough differences between brands that what works for one brand of inkjet printer may be the wrong thing to do to another. Always read your documentation. Inkjet printers are quite inexpensive today and are often not repaired when they stop working as expected. It is cheaper to buy a new one than to attempt to repair one that's malfunctioning. In some cases, it can be cheaper to buy a new one than to buy new ink. Also known as thermal dye transfer printers, dye sublimation printers are used mainly for photo printing, desktop publishing, imaging, or other applications in need of color and detail. Snapshot photo printers may fall into this category. They use a roll of heat-sensitive plastic film embedded with sections of dye. The printhead moves across the film and vaporizes the dyes, which soak into the paper, cool, and become solid. Each dot is a blend of the different dye colors. This is an example of continuous tone images, meaning the image consists of a blend of overlaid different dye colors. This is different from the dithered images of other print techniques. Thermal printers come in two varieties, direct thermal and thermal wax transfer. Direct thermal printers are used by many businesses to print receipts. A heated print head burns dot onto the surface of heat sensitive paper. Something to know about this is that these uh, receipts can fade over time. So if they need to be kept for warranty or other purposes, you should make a photocopy of them before they fade. Thermal wax printers are a lot like dye sublimation printers, except they use colored wax. They work with a wider variety of papers, but because they use dithered images, the quality isn't as fine as with dye sublimation printing. Caring for the heating element is fairly simple. Turn off the printer and open it. It can be cleaned with denatured alcohol and a lint-free cloth. Keep the rollers clean. On a thermal wax printer, replacing the ribbon is similar to replacing the roll of paper. Manufacturers will provide any specific information you need to know. Laser printers require the interaction of mechanical, electrical, and optical technologies to work. They place toner on an electrically charged rotating drum and then deposit the toner on paper as the paper moves through the system. Laser beams are used as a light source because of their precision. All the major mechanical components of the laser printer are normally contained in the replaceable toner cartridge. Often, the solution to poor printer quality is to replace the cartridge. In many print cartridges, you'll find the photosensitive drum, an erase lamp, primary corona wire, and toner. Other parts of the laser printer include the laser beam, the transfer corona, and the fuser. There are also at least two power supplies, one for the motors, electronic, and laser. The other high voltage power supply only provides power to the primary corona. There are seven steps to the laser printing process. The first step is processing. Laser printers process and print an entire page at one time. The image is sent to the printer encoded in a printer language, and the printer's firmware then processes it to make a bitmap of the page, which is stored in the printer's memory. Monochrome printers produce one bitmap, and color lasers produce four, one for each color of toner in the printer. The second step is conditioning or charging. The surface of the drum is conditioned to accept a very high negative electrical charge 
and this is done by the primary charging roller or the primary corona. In step three, exposing or writing. A laser beam writes a positive charge on the drum. Areas that are hit by the laser release most of their negative charge into the drum. The laser makes a pass down the length of the drum, one pass for each raster line of the image, so that the areas written or exposed to the laser then become attractive to the toner. At this point, if you were to look at the the drum, you would see nothing on the drum at all. If you could see the differences in electrical charges, that is all you would see. In step four, developing. Toner is attracted onto the drum where the charge has been reduced by being hit with the laser beam. This develops the image onto the drum in toner. A control blade prevents too much toner from sticking to the drum surface. Transferring is step five. The paper now receives a strong electrical charge which causes the toner to be transferred off of the drum onto the page. This is the first step in the process that occurs outside of the toner cartridge. Fusing for step six. Because the toner is just sitting loosely on the paper, Heat and pressure are used to bond the toner to the paper in the fuser. The fuser produces very high heat, enough to burn you if you touch it after it's been operating. You can tell the fusing area of the printer because it generally contains a message warning of high temperatures. This heat is enough to melt some types of plastic media and adhesive. So don't use materials in a laser printer that are not designed for laser printers. For example, laser sheets made for inkjet printers will peel off in the laser printer due to high heat and be very messy to clean up. The last step is cleaning. The drum is cleaned of residual toner and electrical charges left over from printing the page. And then the process begins again. To help you remember the proper order of these steps, think pampered cows won't dance the foxtrot correctly. To remember processing, conditioning, writing, developing, transferring, fusing, and cleaning. Many of the steps in the laser printing process occur in replaceable cartridges. Either one toner cartridge containing both the toner and the drum or separate cartridges for the image, drum, and toner. This lowers the cost of operating a laser printer as only the needed cartridge is replaced. Printers that can print on both sides of the paper are called duplex printers or double-sided printers. Here are some general guidelines to printer problems with laser printers. When the printing is faded, smeary, wavy, speckled, or streaked, the toner may be low. Remove the cartridge and rock it gently from side to side to redistribute the toner and then replace the cartridge. If it prints now, you will probably need to replace the cartridge soon. If there is nothing on the page, replace the cartridge now. Turn off the Econo Mode setting. This is a setting using less toner and it may produce faint output. Try new paper. Try a higher quality of paper. Or even try a different brand of paper. Also, clean the inside of the printer with a dry, lint-free cloth. Other maintenance tips. Keep it clean. Clean excess toner and paper dust from the printer every time you replace the toner cartridge. Compressed air will work, but don't lean over the printer as you do this or you'll need to be cleaned next. Don't use a vacuum to remove these particles unless it is one specifically designed for computers. These will be low static vacuums. The best thing to use is a dry, lint-free cloth to pick up most of the debris. 
Most often, personal printer speed is dependent on the speed of the computer as well as that of the printer. You can often improve performance by upgrading the printer memory or the system RAM on your PC. If the bottom of a page does not print, this means there is insufficient memory in either the PC or the printer to hold that image until it can be transferred to the page. Over the years, printer connections have been available for serial ports, SCSI, parallel, USB, firewire, network, and wireless connections. The most common connection types are parallel, USB, and network. Parallel ports transmit data in parallel 8 bits at a time. Data integrity suffers if the data cable over which it is transmitted is too long. So parallel cable should be no longer than 12 feet to ensure data integrity. Bidirectional parallel ports are often used for the fast transmission of data over short distances. The standard for parallel ports and cables is the IEEE 1284 standard. This provides specifications to be met by ports and cables to ensure data integrity, standard electrical and physical interfaces, protocols to be used, and so on. Most new printers now use USB connections. This provides faster throughput than parallel communication. Some printers come with firewire connections along with or instead of USB connections. If you have a firewire port on your computer and a firewire cable, you may wish to use this for your printer connection, especially if you already have several USB devices connected to your system. The speeds are comparable, so there's no particular advantage of going with one instead of the other. A printer on a network can be set up in a couple of different ways. The printer may be connected to one of the computers on the network and then shared with other devices on the network. The drawback to this is that the computer that the printer is connecting to must be on in order for the other devices to print. Today, many printers come with their own network connection so they can be directly connected to a hub or a router. If you'd like this type of connection for a printer, but it doesn't have its own RJ45 port, you can get a standalone network device called a print server. Connect, it, connect the printer to it via USB or parallel port, and then connect the server to the network. In this situation, since the printer doesn't connect directly to a PC, only the device that's printing needs to be on along with the printer and the print server. Setting up a printer in Windows is simply a matter of stepping through the installation wizard. Newer operating systems should have the driver for your printer. When installing a new model of printer in older versions of Windows, Use the manufacturer's installation disk for the driver or download one from the website. The driver in Windows will most likely be out of date. If installing a network printer, you will need the network identification or name for that printer. When troubleshooting printers, begin by determining where the problem is located. It may be with the printer, the PC hardware, the operating system, the application using the printer, the cable, or if connected to a network, on the network itself. Attempt to isolate the problem to one of the following areas. The application, the operating system and drivers, print connections, and the printer itself. Begin with the printer itself and see if you can print from it without being connected to the PC. Most printers will allow you to do a printer self-test, printing some text and graphics as well as information specific to that model of printer. 
Check your printer documentation for instructions on how to print this test page. In this case, all you need is the printer and a power cable. The printer does not need to be hooked up to a PC. If this test page prints successfully, you know that the printer itself is functioning. Next, try to print from the operating system. In Windows, begin with Start, Devices and Printers. Right click on the printer icon, then click on Printer Properties. From here, click the, click the Print Test Page button. The resulting test page is not the same as the printer self-test. This is the operating system test page containing a list of drivers that your operating system is using to communicate with the printer, the port it is using, and the driver name. If this test page doesn't print, the problem may be with the cable, with the driver, or with the operating system. Check to see if the printer cable is correctly and firmly attached at both ends. If you're using a USB hub, try connecting the printer directly to the PC to find out if the problem is with the hub. Try printing with another PC using the same printer and cable. Check CMOS when using a USB port to ensure that an IRQ is assigned to the port. If the printer is connected to a parallel port, go into CMOS to see if that port is configured properly. Has it been disabled? Is it set to ECP or bidirectional? Bidirectional should be fine for most parallel port printers. Make sure you are printing to the proper printer. In other words, that the printer you're attempting to print to use is set as the default. This is a common problem, especially if you can print to both a network printer and a local printer as well. If all of these things check out fine, then look to the operating system or device drivers. Remove and reinstall the existing printer driver. If this doesn't help, try another driver for a similar model of your brand of printer. If it does print then, you'll know the driver for your printer is bad. Download one from the manufacturer's website and get the latest version available. If you've checked everything and it's in good working order, one more thing to check is the print spooler. This can be found by double-clicking the printer's icon in the control panel applet or by clicking on the print icon in the system tray. Spooler errors include overflow, too many jobs, incompatibility, or many other problems. Delete the affected print job and resend it. Sometimes shutting down the printer after deleting the print jobs can restore the spooler. The spooler can also be turned off in print properties. This can enable immediate printing and bypasses a problematic spooler. Sometimes the problem is with none of these things, but with the application you are trying to print from. Try printing from another application, Notepad, instead of Word, for instance. You may need to actually reinstall your application. Network printing comes with its own set of problems. Some things to check include, is the printer online? Is the correct network printer selected at your PC? Is the print queue jammed with a print job from another PC? Is the printer control device or software functioning properly? Sometimes this needs to be reset or reinitialized. Is the printer out of paper? You may need the assistance of a network support person to help fix network printing problems. If you are this person, you should know how to reset the printer, how to clear a print queue, and how to maintain the printers. Your book lists other possible problem areas for specific types of printers. It would be wise to look up whichever kind of printer you have or use most often 
to see what to do in the case of problems. This concludes our presentation on printers.